that they can hear us like clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so too. Hello everyone! Welcome to Lebanon Business My name is Rasa and here's my friend. Hi guys, hi. We are from a custom and today you will be able to hear all the information about the studies in Sweden, um, shopping university and jobs. Yeah, that's right. So we are welcome to right. so the office team. We know all these things from countries for the Sweden, and we can address the Sweden University. So I'll like shortly introduce Actually, it's one of the most international universities in Sweden. They have a huge variety of students. When you will study in Sweden, you will study in Sweden. You're not studying in Sweden. You're a student of the world. Lots of nationalities and people in different countries. And you will study with people who are working with people and you learn. They are knowledge yeah. tradition and expand your knowledge and knowledge. And what is interesting in 2016 we received education the first university in Sweden having used to have a station EQS and AC SD accreditation. And as far as I know, to get those patients, the rest of should do broadly. So I hope that maybe Barry from Yun Trump could tell us more about that. And yes, uh, yeah. here you are the representative of uh, this university. Uh, and it moved to the school of us, I'm going to say, in 2004, and has been working with the National Foundation at the Program of the Focus in 2008. And we will talk about Sweden as a state destination, as well as about uh, what we need, what we need, first of all, and I need. And I don't know, so maybe you can introduce uh, yourself shortly. Okay, my, my name is Ernest Kuchera. I was born and raised in Prague, Czech Republic. Um, I went to uh, GIPS, one of the Yenshin University faculties, right after my uh, high school studies. Um, this is my second semester here, so I started in September 2017, and I'm studying marketing management. Yes. Okay, and uh, just yeah, like, uh, 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 during all webinar, you can ask uh, questions and answer them answer them on one card. So uh, Eric, so, uh, I think you're going to have to ask some questions to your presentation. Okay, great. Yes, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, great. All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, great. So what uh, what we thought we would do today is uh, I will uh, we try we'll try not to uh, to bore you. We'll tell you a little bit about. Um, I'll start by telling you a bit about Sweden as a study destination, uh, why it should sort of be on your list if it isn't, uh, and what sort of advantages studying in Sweden uh, can give you, and then of course talk a bit about us, Jönköping University. Uh, and what we offer for programs, and then um, and then I thought that uh, Arnos and I would have a little bit of a chat about uh, what it's like being a student here, and then I'll let him tell you from from a student's perspective. So let's get started. Um, first, a bit about Sweden. Um, well, here it is. Uh, this is, of course, you know where Sweden is. You're uh, in uh, watching from countries that are quite close. Uh, but Sweden is actually the third uh, whoop, third biggest country uh, in Western Europe after uh, France and Spain, land-wise. Uh, and so it, it's it's quite big, um, but the population isn't so big. It's about 10 million people. And if we look at, um, uh, zoom in a bit, and you can see where Jönköping is located, uh, and up above us uh, you see Stockholm, and the sort of the southern part of Sweden if you draw a line from Stockholm West, 
uh, actually about 90% of the population um, live in this region. So although Sweden is not so densely populated, um, in, in the area we live in, uh, there are quite a lot of people uh, living here. Um, I won't bore you with a discussion about the Swedish economy, but I will say a few things um, about the Swedish economy, and that is that it's a strong one. Uh, uh, but it hasn't always been that way, actually. In the, um, uh, the end of the 1800s, Sweden was actually one of the poorest countries uh, in the world, and uh, um, especially within Europe. And, uh, and then the 50 years following that, sort of the turn of the century, Sweden went through a massive industrialization and uh, they built railroads and those railroads allowed them to uh, really develop uh, some uh, main areas uh, such as um, iron ore and hydropower and forestry, so wood. So um, these industries really became the backbone of the Swedish economy. And today we still have these industries actually, and they're still the backbone of the Swedish economy. Uh, but nowadays Sweden has become much more diversified. So there's biotechnology, there's uh, fashion and design and, uh, and tech. Uh, and uh, there's, there's uh, quite a lot of, for, for the size of the country actually, Sweden is one of the most, has one of the most diversified economies. Uh, let's see. And uh, so one reason, of course, is uh, it's a good economy and it's an innovative country. So that's uh, one of the reasons why um, you should be thinking about Sweden as a study destination. Uh, innovation, uh, for example, um, this uh, Skype that everyone knows about, um, nowadays, of course, we have other apps that we use that are competing with Skype that are sometimes better uh, tools like WhatsApp and uh, we use uh, Messenger and many other uh, different uh, different apps, but S Skype was really a game changer uh, back in the beginning of the 2000s um, when a Swedish guy named Niklas Enström, together with a Danish guy uh, and some Estonian programmers, developed Skype, uh, and suddenly it became free to to um, you know to communicate and to video and audio all around the world. Uh, another Swedish innovation that is quite uh, popular around the world is, is Spotify. And uh, the guy on the front cover of Wired there is Daniel Ek. Uh, and his idea was that um, he was a disruptor because he really didn't believe that uh, it was good that, uh, well, that the music industry was uh, charging so much and that, that everyone, especially in Sweden, were downloading uh, lots of music for free. Uh, and he wanted to find a better solution and offer, of course, what we now know is that we pay per month and we get sort of to listen to access to music. Um, IKEA is another example. Uh, this is probably the one Swedish company that everyone recognizes as Swedish. Um, and they've done a pretty good job of, of branding IKEA as a Swedish company. And actually, I, IKEA um, became quite uh, became the largest furniture manufacturer in the world uh, and mainly as a result of their flat pack strategy that uh, you know when you buy furniture from Ikea and it comes in the flat pack that everyone either loves or hates um, but actually that allowed for um, people to for us to store uh, for Ikea to store the furniture the flat pack in a room and save costs and shipping was also saving costs so the flat pack, along with the design and sort of, and, and of course how they source the the material, uh, turned IKEA into a game, a um, a leader in the furniture industry. Of course, uh, we don't recommend you trying this at home. <laughs> He's a professional, uh, but of course Volvo, everyone recognizes, and but Volvo Trucks is actually the second largest truck manufacturer in the world after Daimler Chrysler. So. Um, the point of uh, showing you sort of all these companies along with this slide is not to brag about how many companies Sweden has or uh, it's to show that sort of for the size of the country, um, Sweden has Swedish companies have uh, quite a large footprint around the world. Uh, and maybe they're not so good at, they're really good at branding themselves as companies. People recognize H&M and Spotify, Volvo and, and, and many others. Uh, 
uh, but maybe they don't always associate them with being Swedish companies. There's a lot of innovation taking place in Sweden, uh, especially for the size of the country, and a lot of the uh, interaction with companies you'll find at universities within Sweden. So there's a lot of connections between um, the between real life and and education. And um, every year uh, they rank innovation. This is a study done by, um, I believe it was uh, Cornell University and several other um, institutions. And every year when, when, innovative, when innovation is, is sort of uh, compared from country to country, Sweden comes up quite high. And uh, just, this was just the other day, actually, uh, another uh, article about and Sweden was named as one of the most innovative countries in the world. So lots of innovation, uh, but also lots of quality, um, and good quality education in Sweden. So that's another reason uh, to choose Sweden as a study destination, that um, as EU citizens, of course, you don't pay tuition fees to study in Sweden, uh, but it's not like you're getting a bad product. You're getting a really good value for, uh, uh, that you don't actually pay tuition for. Uh, and this study is, uh, Universitas is a uh, consortium of universities that rank quality of education and research all around the world. And what they look at is sort of um, many different factors from how much money the government invests in education to how internationalized uh, universities are, the research output, et cetera. So um, again, Sweden, Sweden is a small country, it's an export-driven uh, country and has to be internationally minded. So everyone in Sweden, uh, almost everyone, speaks English. And uh, actually, uh, there's a company called EF that ranks countries by level of English and sort of out looking at countries in Europe outside of uh, the UK. It's always Sweden, uh, the Netherlands and Denmark that come up top. Uh, so as a student, that's great. So you can it's easy to, to come here, speak English, uh, get around. The quality of the English from your professors is going to be at a good level, and you're going to be able to sort of use English everywhere. Uh, all, almost all of the master's programs in Sweden are taught in English, actually, about over 90% of them. And then uh, more and more bachelors are being offered in, in English. That's a bit where, uh, what makes us unique in that we offer quite a few bachelor's programs uh, in English, unlike some other Swedish universities. Here's a picture from up above. Um, you can see where we have four schools. I'll, I'll name them in a minute. Uh, but this is the, the main city center, and the campus is located right in the center. Uh, Jönköping has about 130,000 people in it, so it's a real student city. Uh, and that actually sets it apart from other cities in Sweden. Uh, because wherever you go, you're going to feel like a student, um, and uh, that uh, that's a good thing. Um, and uh, but and it doesn't feel so small, despite being uh, a, a medium-sized city in Sweden. Because um, there's pretty much everything here. Uh, so you you and there's a really good student life. But I'll let Anna's talk more about that later. So here are, you can see the schools that we have. Uh, our business school uh, is uh, by far the most international of the schools that we, we have. Um, and about 45% of our students at the business school are international students. Uh, about 45% of the faculty also uh, are international. Um, and it also has the largest uh, network of partner universities of any business school in, in Scandinavia. So, these are the things that make us uh, make our business school one of the most, if not the most, international business school in in, uh, in the Nordics. Uh, school of Engineering is also um, quite international uh, in in nature, and they're offering more and more programs in English. Um, and then we have a School of Education and Communication with some programs, and a School of Health and Welfare. Uh, in total, about eleven thousand students uh, at the university. Uh, and this slide has way too much on it, but I'll just name a few things. Uh, as uh, Arthur mentioned, actually, when he, he started the presentation, uh, our business school is very proud of being double accredited, the first one in Sweden, first business school in Sweden. And basically what this means is 
Um, well, the Swedish government accredits all uh, institutions of higher education, all universities in Sweden. Uh, and so there's going to be a good quality wherever, actually, you go in Sweden. Uh, but the advantage to, to GIPS is that we're also uh, accredited by external organizations, these, these two, AACSB and, and Equus. And these are um, organizations that actually also are, uh, come in and make sure and audit and make sure that we have really good quality education and research. Uh, so this is uh, something that only 1% of business schools in the world have, and it takes many years to attain. So it's sort of a stamp of quality for, for you as a student. Um, we also are, are ranked in some other areas uh, of research, uh, namely family business and entrepreneurship. These are areas that we're really good at. Um, our, our business school, our, our school of engineering, sorry, is um, also uh, participates in the CDIO initiative, which was started by MIT and basically means that the learning by doing. And you'll find that that's a common thread, actually, in all the schools that there'll be a good mix of practice and, uh, and theory. Again, I'll let Arno Smith talk more about that uh, later. Uh, and that, that brings us to this practical. Uh, there will be a blend of, of practice. We uh, like to say that the industry, that we bring the industry to, to education. And um, we have a science park on campus. It's partly owned by the university. Uh, partly by the city, and this is like a, a an area uh, uh, building that has loads of startups and uh, has business developers that any student can pitch an idea to uh, and get feedback on. So we have a lot of students that actually start up companies. Uh, I think the most recent statistic is one in ten uh, at our business school that start a company while they're students. Uh, and Science Park also. Um, uh, helps in uh, does some teaching and and offers um, offers their services to students. So they'll uh, they'll help if they think an an idea is good. They may invest in um, helping with helping you with your business plan, uh, helping you get the company started in Sweden, and maybe even office space. Um, below with these two pictures, you see some challenges or, or trips that competitions that students are taking part in. There's a lot of these. Um, the one on the left is Entrepreneurship Challenge we have every year where student groups compete for a prize. I think this, the, this prize was, uh, this was last year's uh, winning group and they won about 6,000 euro for the, coming up with the best solution to a, uh, to a business problem. And the group on the right is a group of students every year that go to the University of Vermont and compete in a case competition, family case competition. Uh, and for, for three years in a row, actually, this, our GIF students have won this, uh, this case competition. Uh, this is um, some students, uh, course. I think it's business and entrepreneurship. Yeah, course. I actually took part of uh, the new venture. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, cool. All the courses, all the GIFs courses have the first course common. Yeah. So, um, Entrepreneurship and business planning, and part of entrepreneurship and business planning is this um, new venture show. And we are supposed to come up with an idea and then turn it into a, a business. Yes, great. Let's see. It looks like ah, oh, there we are. Uh, yeah, and so this is one of like Arno said. This is one of the business ideas that was pitched. It was a, a lemonade drink or something like that, and. Um, yeah, so, and here's another example. This is just uh, recently, a few weeks ago, I think. Um, were you involved in this one? Or no, no but okay. friends of mine were, and I okay. actually won, won one of the challenges. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. This was, a, uh, this was spa, uh, sponsored by Volvo Cars, as well as uh, Trivago, I think. And uh, they basically uh, said, OK, come up with the best solution for innovation travel. And yeah, like Arno said, a group of GIP students together with, I think, a student from Stockholm School of Economics won for their idea. And um, I think I have a picture of, yeah, this was their idea. It's hard to see, of course, it's a picture from far away, but it's Volvo Capture. And their idea was to, um, uh, to, more to tie together, I guess, um, uh, social media with the driving experience. Uh, so I guess their idea was that cameras would be 
mounted in in the car and uh, doing and recording and then connecting to the social media. And this was the group that they are doing a selfie. Yeah. Um, we also have a career center and we have an alumni network um, and we have lots of students uh, and we're connected to our graduates. Uh, here's a list of uh, just a, a few of the companies that our graduates are working, working at um, and you'll find uh, that um, there are many JIPS graduates all around the world and, and School of Engineering graduates uh, that have find good jobs um, at, at good companies and that um, there are lots of connections to be made when students are graduating. Uh, so there, there are uh, JIPS students know the practical education that they, that they have and uh, they like to recruit uh, new JIPS students to fill positions. So some of our programs, uh, here are uh, a list of the bachelor's programs that we offer. They're, they're all three-year programs in length. Uh, and um, Arnost is in the marketing management one. Um, and uh, then you can see the first four are all taught at the business school. Um, and you'll find on our website actually really detailed descriptions of the uh, programs, the courses involved, uh, et cetera. Um, but you'll also notice that um, they all offer in the third year, uh, the fifth semester, I believe, uh, uh, a semester abroad at one of our partner universities. And I would say definitely almost 90% of our students um, choose to, to, uh, to go abroad uh, and participate in the exchange program because there are so many uh, good partner universities that we're, we're teamed with. And, uh, there, there's lots of opportunity uh, to, um, you don't have to pay, of course, when you go abroad, and there are many options. Uh, then you can see some more programs that we offer, visual effects, that's actually taught off campus, that's for people interested in, uh, comp in computer animation and for the film or TV industry. Uh, new media design, which is taught by our School of Engineering, it's like graphic design and web development, and uh, it's, we call it a unicorn program because it's, it's quite unique actually that uh, normally you have students doing either graphic design or web development. This combines the two. Um, and then uh, sustainable supply chain management, uh, which is taught at the School of Engineering, and prosthetics and orthotics, which is quite unique here in Scandinavia. I won't go through all of the programs, uh, but I'll just show you the slide. These are some of our master's programs. Now, master's programs are either one year or two years in length, uh, and they offer, um, the two-year programs offer more depth, they're more suited for students that want to go into research, uh, and they also offer a chance to go abroad or maybe do an internship in the second year. And you can see the first, uh, the majority of, uh, or all the programs on this, this slide are taught at our uh, business school, and they're within business administration, or economics. And then the last one is a bit of an IT business mix. Um, it doesn't say on these slides if it's a one year or two year, but it says on our program pages. So you can, you can do the research and see um, if it's one or two years. The one year is 60 credits. Uh, you still get the same master's of science degree at the end, uh, but it's, uh, it's concise. It's, it's a short program for students that maybe want to save money on living costs and uh, and maybe or maybe have a job that they're going back to. Here are some more of our, our two year. Uh, these are all two year masters actually. Um, the majority of the uh, list are School of Engineering, and you can see um, the types of programs that we're offering within uh, manufacturing and uh, mechanical engineering, as well as uh, as well as IT. Then we have a few programs at the end, Educare, which is pre the Swedish preschool model, Interventions in Childhood, uh, International Communication, um, and, uh, which is Media Communications, and Occupational Therapy, which is a web-based program. Uh, our requirements are quite straightforward. Uh, if you're applying for a bachelor's uh, program, uh, these are the things we require, and we have a really good guide on our website 
called our undergraduate admissions guide uh, that go through all the steps that you need, all the documents you need, how they should be prepared and sent to us. And also in, there's a link to the application. But as you can see, we require your high school diploma. Um, you, you can be in your final year of high school, it's okay, as long as you're in your final semester. And we, so we don't necessarily need the final diploma if you're in your last year. Uh, then we need transcripts, a copy of your passport, letter of motivation, and you need to prove your English uh, through one of the tests. And we have a whole page devoted to exactly which tests we accept and the minimum scores. Uh, we're open until um, actually, there's a misprint here on this slide. It says 1st of April, but the application deadline is actually the 2nd of May. I'm not sure how that appeared there, uh, but May 2nd is the deadline for application to our programs. Of course, now we're in a bit of a late, later stage, so programs can fill up early. Uh, and the next slide is our master's requirements. Uh, there you need a bachelor's diploma or you need to be in your final year of a bachelor's uh, uh, program. And you, the, the master's programs have specific requirements. So you need to look on the program page to find out, um, for instance, if you're interested in international marketing or digital business, you need to have a bachelor's within business administration. So it's just to check the program page for the requirements. Um, and you can see here, otherwise all the other requirements are the same. And also the deadline got a bit messed up here. It should be 2nd of May. Uh, of course, uh, no tuition fee. It's great, it's a great value. Uh, for you. Uh, of course, non-EU citizens are paying uh, tuition fees, uh, which are, are uh, quite high. So it's a great value for EU citizens to apply to universities in Sweden, to us. Uh, you don't have to play, pay to apply either. Uh, and many people think of uh, Sweden as being expensive, but many students, once they're here, say that, well, there's some things that are expensive and some, and, and, uh, and some things that, that aren't. And I'll let Arnos actually talk more about that later, what his opinion is. But um, I, I think that the, the average cost of living is, people say, between seven and 800 euro per month, including uh, the accommodation. These are just some things that are uh, organized by students. There's a really big, uh, the student life here is really good. There's lots of things to take part in, uh, from open mic to, uh, to career fairs, to, um, to all kinds of uh, events and, and activities and groups to join. Uh, and um, yeah, even the language uh, cafe and trips uh, in Sweden, in, in, uh, uh, in Scandinavia, and even uh, to, uh, to other parts of, of Europe. And uh, we guarantee accommodation, uh, which not all Swedish universities do. Uh, it's very tight, the accommodation. Uh, so I recommend if you apply uh, to, for a program and you're admitted, to follow all uh, the directions for how to apply for accommodation and to do it on time to make sure that you get it, um, as it's really tight, the situation for housing. Uh, we pick you up. We have a full week of introduction. Um, there are contact students for students that want to meet other, like a buddy program. Um, there, are student, there are contact families for students that want to meet a, a local family and get more of an idea about what cult, the culture is like here. Um, as I mentioned, student activities are numerous. Um, you have health care through your EU citizenship, so your EU card you need to have with you. Um, and you can study Swedish, of course, while you're here. Uh, it's used, they're usually quite popular, so you have to sign up early. Um, and you're allowed to work, uh, although um, that's a question we get quite often about work. Um, it's not always easy finding work without learning a bit of Swedish. That's the bottom line. There are students that find small part-time jobs, but it can be a bit, uh, a bit tricky without learning a, bit, a little bit of Swedish. Even though everyone speaks English, uh, employers tend to want uh, to find people that can uh, speak conversational Swedish. 
So uh, that was the end of the presentation. And I'll let Arthur, I'll let you tell us um, how much time we have to uh, to talk a bit about uh, from the student perspective. So I can stop talking and let Arnos tell the student side of things. Yeah, Eric, first of all, thank you very much. First of all, thank you very much. I know that we have some problem here with the connection with the sound. We received few notice from students that they speak well. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we're hearing from you, I guess, as well, that the sound might not be perfect right now. Yeah, sound is not perfect. I'll try to speak not so much. Not so much. Uh, the thing is that students can ask questions. Uh, if those who are watching, you're welcome to ask questions. Please write your questions, and then the end of this webinar will try to answer. And at the moment, we have 15 minutes and to hear his experience. Experience. Okay, I see a Facebook chat here. Do I need to uh, to log into it? Um, actually, no. I'll just uh, I'll just say questions. What we have. Okay, great. So maybe first of all, the student just could uh, ask his experience, what he thinks about studies, about PhD, student, about the Trump University. Yeah, uh, well, honest, um, we had a few questions here, and I guess, um, or I had written down a few things. Um, I guess one thing that students might be wondering is, what are studies like here? What What is a typical day for you like? Or maybe it varies a bit. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I haven't studied uh, at university before, so this is my primal experience when, do, when it comes to college life. And I would say, um, Mm, from what I've heard from friends studying at home in Prague, um, it's not as time demanding. You don't have to go to school every day. Um, me, uh, I, I go to school to study to prepare for the lessons, lectures as well. But people that can uh, get ready at home, you really have to go to school three times a week for lectures. Like this week we have six lectures. Uh, two lectures per day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So okay. it's not that time demanding, definitely. And what would you say, what are the lectures like? Now you're in your first year of uh, uh, bachelor, so maybe it varies a bit from, uh, from the second and third year as the groups become smaller, maybe. But what kind of uh, classes are you doing? What, what are, what, can you give an example of like the type of studies? Well, varies, but um, my first semester, there's this one big class we call entrepreneurship class, entrepreneurship and business planning, and there are um, there's approximately 400 people. So the whole you know, lecture is conducted in this huge lecture hall they have at School of Education. It was the biggest class I ever been to. Otherwise, um, it's around 50 students per per lecture. Okay. Great. Uh, and um, yeah, how would you describe? You mentioned the entrepreneurship and business planning course. Could you talk about like, uh, was it a? Were you just listening to lectures, or what was the structure of the course? Um, <clears throat> there are regular re lectures and then seminars. Mm -hmm. We had, for example, one seminar per four lectures. Uh, the seminars are usually for less students. So one seminar group consists of um, approximately 12 students. So it's easier to communicate in the seminar. Mm -hmm. Except for seminars, uh, there's a lot of attention to group works, at least at JIPS. Um, so last semester, I think that I had to hand in uh, around six uh, papers, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, what um, what is really important for for JIPS at least is the group work. Mm -hmm. So most of the papers we had to make, uh, we had to do were assigned to groups, groups of five, groups of six, uh, which makes it sometimes easier to do. But sometimes uh, difficult because as we are so international, 
there are differences in cultures which then manifest themselves mm. in the group work. That's mm. okay. So you're sort of learning uh, what it's like to maybe work at a global, uh, yeah, uh, in, definitely. in a global environment. Yeah. That that's one of the main things in our gyms. You really learn how to work with other people, with other cultures. That's mm. the international at heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and what was the final project for entrepreneurship and business planning that course? Um, you know, can you tell what you had to do and what how it sort of how the how it works? We had two weeks to come up uh, with a venture idea, some some idea we could transform into a business. Um, I was in a group with, uh, I was in a quite international group, like people from Asia, Swedish people as well. And we came up with uh, this idea uh, of uh, delivering groceries to elderly people around the shipping. Oh, we wow. weren't as successful as we thought we would be, but uh, our profit was uh, 1,200 kronas, which is quite good for the project. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though we haven't won, I think we have learned a lot through the experience. Mm -hmm. So the pur purpose isn't maybe to have a successful business, it's to sort of practice the process. Yeah, of learning. learn mm -hmm. how the process works, yeah. what, what do you have to do when you are starting a business. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe uh, like student life here? How, what, what, like, uh, what were your expectations and then what was it like when you got here? I didn't really have expectations since yeah, I haven't experienced the real student life before. Okay. Um, but I was quite pleasantly surprised, to be frank. Um, the student union has this club in the city center called uh, Academian. The entrance is free until uh, nine o'clock every Wednesday. Uh, so it takes, takes place on Wednesdays. Um, well, I was quite surprised by uh, the prices of alcohol there. Definitely they are way higher than Okay. Um, where I'm from, yeah. but on the other hand, uh, all the soft drinks are free there, so uh, Coke and water, yeah, mm -hmm. nobody has to pay for them. Okay. So it's definitely like, um, maybe not an issue in Sweden, I would say it's even maybe better that uh, the prices are way, way higher than uh, where we come from, or at least I think it's the same in Poland and, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other country, Lithuania. Lithuania. Yeah, yeah. The okay. prices are approximately three times uh, higher than mm. in Prague, where I come from, which makes you spend money on more important stuff, not alcohol. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and what would you say? Uh, that's you. You, you took up cost of living there. So what would you say is uh, what is cost of living like? Um, that's expensive. The, maybe it's a bit of a shock with the alcohol prices. What about just day to day life and and food and stuff like that? Well, um, the accommodation, the student accommodation, at least I think it's uh, quite inexpensive, quite cheap. Um, when it comes to food, uh, there is one thing I realized that there's, there are like cheaper things in Sweden, but I never really looked for them, so I uh, didn't okay. realize until um, basically this semester, and that's uh, vegetables. Frozen vegetables are way cheaper than in Czech Republic. Really? Okay. Yeah, like, <laughs> Three times cheaper, you're talking. Okay. Uh, if I want to uh, buy, I don't even know the word, havre, crot, like, uh, yeah, green like green beans uh, or something. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, the, yeah, yeah, green beans. Green beans, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Super cheap. Uh, but meat, for example, that's twice as expensive as uh, if I were to buy in Czech Republic. Okay. And meat is more expensive. Eating out is very expensive. If a person wants to eat out, I don't know, the, the prices are just preposterous, at so least to if, me. So if you go to like a sit down a restaurant, restaurant, yeah, yeah. A regular restaurant. Yeah. Maybe a fast food um, is a bit cheaper, but I haven't really went to a fast food restaurant here in Inchipping. Okay. I know there is a McDonald's uh, at A6, yeah. this uh, shopping center, but I've been once there and only to visit IKEA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> IKEA is the place to go if one is, one is low on money and wants to eat. Yeah, they have quite inexpensive breakfast and lunch there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, what are you paying for accommodation uh, in euro, um, approximately? Wow, well, in euros or in krona? I can uh, usually. Yeah, it's by ten. Yeah. I, I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> I think like um, 
1,630 maybe, 1,600. Okay, that's quite cheap. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, it's quite expensive. I wouldn't say there's so much accommodation that cheap, actually. You got a really good one. <laughs> yeah. That's like uh, 160 euro or something. But I would say most people are paying, are you sharing accommodation? Uh, room? No, and that's no. per month. Okay, yeah, I would say yeah. Most students are paying between 250, 250 euro to 400 euro per month, depending on the accommodation that they have. But um, but there are other. Yeah, I live quite far, so that my okay. Issue, yeah. yeah, like 45 minutes from the university. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and what about getting here from uh, your home country? Have you been back to visit? Ah, of course. Um, um, it, it's different when you come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's different. Um, I I travel by plane, so from Gatteborg to Prague, um, mm -hmm. direct flight. Um, there's I don't know. There's not much to say about it. The flights are always expensive, mm -hmm. or at least I think so. And um, the bus to Gatteborg, it's when you ca ca catch a good bus, it's like 150, 150 kronas. Okay, so like 15 euro or so. Yeah, yeah, 15 euros. And I know we have our own airport here. You've probably seen uh, that we have a very small airport here in Jönköping. Yeah. And it goes, it, they do have direct flights to Frankfurt. So sometimes, depending on where you're coming from, you can find a deal. Uh, but still, many people choose to use uh, Gothenburg's airport, uh, which is has a lot more international connections. Great. Um, Arthur, I think that we uh, will leave it at, at that then, um, and maybe see if there are any questions from uh, uh, from uh, people watching. Yeah, actually, we have few yeah, questions. Have and the question of first about about possible to find work, find work studies. Uh, yeah. Finding work during mm -hmm. studies. Yeah, maybe you could uh, say if you you. What you what your experience has been? I haven't looked for work uh, per se, but I know students that are not from Inchipping, uh, not from Sweden, that don't speak Swedish and that got work. Especially uh, Yenchipping is um, the center of logistics in Sweden. So if one is all right with um, like um, warehouse work, moving stuff around about, then yeah, work can be found. But um, it's uh, important to know that you need Swedish bank account and uh, a Swedish social num social number to get uh, to get a job here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we always say from you know from my perspective from uh, working for the university and and you know being a representative of Sweden, I always say I would never say you should expect to find work before you come, like to rely on extra income. Uh, but like Arno said, many students do find uh, op some opportunities and if you're not so picky about what kind of uh, what kind of work. But it can be difficult if you want if you want to find work where you're communicating on a daily basis without uh, without Swedish. Yeah. And we have yeah. one more yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more question. Practice. practice. If students do practice internship in Australia studies. And yeah. yes, what possibilities uh, they have? What they have? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, Jibs is building up uh, their uh, help with inter helping students find internships. Um, I just met with uh, with someone that's working with that at the at the business school. Uh, the other day, and um, all a lot of the programs have have an offer of um, where you can have an internship in the program. Uh, there isn't a guarantee, except I think in one of our master's programs, digital business, where you're actually it's built in. You have to do an international internship in the program. But all of the two-year master's programs offer an internship possibility in the second year. And uh, students are supposed to find it on their own, but there are a lot of resources to help, uh, postings uh, for internships available, and some other other help available for students. And also, I think in international management and marketing management, that in the third year, there's opportunity also to do uh, to do an internship. Um, again, it's it's on the student to find it, but there are resources available. Um, and usually, if students really want an internship. From uh, my experience, that 
is that they they're able to to find something. Yeah, a little self promotion here. I'm a member of this uh, association at school, ESN, yeah. uh, Erasmus Student Network. We are all over Europe, so maybe maybe you know ESN, and we also have a program to help students find internships. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, and then a bit the engineering master's programs, uh, they have it built in to all of their master's programs. Uh, and I believe uh, they're uh, one of their bachelor programs as well. So that it's autom automatic that you are doing an industry placement, it's called, uh, in your second year. Yeah, we have one more question. One more question. If it is possible to if enter a master's program, for example, uh, international marketing, marketing in business without prior education in the business. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you need to have the. Uh, you don't need to have a, a bachelor's within business administration, but you need to have enough credits. So that usually is about 60 ECTS credits plus 30 in a related area. So you could either have 90 credits in business admin which is most likely a major then, or 60 in business plus 30 in economics or 30 in industrial engineering and management. So usually the students coming in, getting uh, uh, eligible for our uh, masters in business administration have a background in business admin. Unfortunately, we don't have many other, uh, we don't have a chance to sort of cross over. The one exception is engineering management, and that's a program in management for engineers. That's a one-year master's for students that they don't have a, a business background, but they want to. Yeah, and we have one more. One more. If there are scholarships. There are scholarships. Um, well, unfortunately, when it comes to EU citizens, no. Uh, because the entire education is subsidized by the Swedish government. So if you look at, you take um, international or marketing management, for example, um, that program would cost uh, about 10,000 euro per year for a non-EU student. And so EU students, um, so there are scholarships available to them that can reduce the cost by about 30%. Uh, but for EU citizens, since it's completely subsidized, there are no scholarships at the moment that we we're aware of for living costs and stuff like that. Yeah, great. Actually, was the last question. The last question. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I will some information for those who are looking for Skype meeting. Eric, wait uh, after this webinar. We will contact these people who would like to have a Skype. And, uh, and uh, yeah, what else? You just have like all of them who participate in this webinar. And if you have any questions about country, about application forms, and what to do to enter, you are welcome to contact us to offices in. in uh, uh, Lithuania in uh, Poland, Poland will guide you through application process and help you to get up to there. Yeah, I, once again, I apologize for the connection from our from Lithuania from our side. Now, but uh, I hope that we still have possibility to learn and hear everything that I would like to learn about your chapter. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And thank you, those who watch us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.